Welcome to Greetings from Florida, a weekly roundup of the horrible news stories to come out of Florida. Yes, Florida, a state sinking into the ocean at a brisk pace. For our first story tonight, we have a revenge plot gone awry. A man with a vendetta against a former friend failed in his retribution when he picked the wrong car. Traveling to his former friend's home, attacking what he believed to be his friend's car. However, the friend called the police, seeing the man through his bedroom window smashing his neighbor's car with a bat. Here's a tip. If you're unsure of your intended target, just take down the entire neighborhood, just to be sure. In our next story, sad news everyone, the cool guy in the neighborhood has gone to jail. A good Samaritan trying to keep kids off the street and out of trouble was throwing parties where he served alcohol, offered weed, and kicked back with some LSD. Sadly, the parents were total narcs about the whole situation because it made them feel totally uncool. You know what's not cool? Fucking up a good time. That's what's not cool. What the fuck, parents? In our next story, the summer crazies are in full bloom. As a lost North Pole elf is adjusting to the new realities of Florida. Kinda took things too far. After his girlfriend fled to the neighbors for protection, he went for treatment with the police to the hospital. When he got out, he became enraged that his neighbors had not picked him up. He went to their place, picked a fight with a baseball bat. To calm him down, the neighbors let him talk with his girlfriend on the phone, who he became even more enraged at, smashing the neighbor's phone to the ground. He said he would bury his neighbors, then throwing a shovel on their lawn, finally ending his day by throwing a propane tank through their front door. The police then took the elf back to the hospital, where he said he was sorry and didn't mean to hurt anyone. In our next story, a drunken racist man tries to kill himself at Disney World. The Ohio man who needed assistance was met by a golf cart, then dove through the windshield, took the driver's seat, crashing it into the pier. He tried to swim away, only to struggle. By this point, the Disney Marine team was on site, trying to rescue him, only to be met by racial slurs. The man then refused aid or rescue, diving underwater, only to come up barely conscious gasping for air, was dragged into the boat to be taken for medical attention, then later to jail. Shout out to other states. Stop dumping your trash in our backyard. For our next story, we have the breakdown of two social values. A man feeling he's too old to be told what to do, tried to choke his mother on Mother's Day. The mother had woken him up and his friend and told the friend to go home and for him to clean his room. This enraged the man pushing him to choke her. The friend quickly sprang into action, saving the mom to the cry of, It's not okay to attack your mother, and you should never do it again. Yes, absolutely correct. Things did cool down, at least for a bit, till the friend got his throat slit. He was then denied medical treatment till he agreed to say he fell. This goes to show you, Floridians are hard to kill. You gotta give the guy props, arguing with massive blood loss. In our next story, we deal with an issue of personal belief. A waitress believing she should not live in poverty and deserving a bigger tip altered her gratuity to the tune of $1,074 between 139 bills. Split up, that's about 8 bucks per tab. We respect her right not to die poor, but spread the con out a little more. Rip other servers' tabs off. Maybe a lower rate. Be smarter about this, girl. They do check. That's why you're the only one doing this. In our next story, a bit of hometown values. Mike's Town. It's a fairly average day in my neighborhood. A preschool special needs teacher was arrested in conjunction with smuggling 220 pounds of pot into the country. Can you say conjunction junction, kids? Sure, I knew you could. We assume this is a Breaking Bad situation, but for all we know is it's in Mike's neighborhood, and we know how well he turned out. This woman happens to be the daughter of Reverend O'Neill Dozier of the Pompano Beach Christian Center. Hey, wait, that's down the road from me. The Reverend is famous for saying things like, gays make God want to vomit as well as many anti-Muslim rants. And now his daughter is in jail for smuggling pot. For the record, both our neighborhoods suck. Look carefully, look and listen. Next story, an incident at a Walmart. The casting call location for To Catch a Predator. A pool man wearing his anything wet pool work shirt was crouching down using his cell phone to capture panty shots of a little girl. This was noticed by the girl's mother, who tried to move away, only to be followed to the next register by the man. On one hand, this is commitment. On the other hand, this is being committed to the wrong thing. And he would have gotten away with it too, if not for his work shirt and the closed circuit cameras. When captured, the man said, the girl was younger than my daughter, and it was a stupid thing to do. We here at Greetings from Florida agree with you. Gee. 
Floridian hindsight seems to be in full effect this week. We did delete the photos, but we are still waiting on an apology. For our next story, a video clockwork orange style robbery. An elderly woman had her kittens killed, was beaten, had her face stomped on, had her body, breast, and face cut up with glass, and her stomach and home spray painted. All to steal a save. Just a bit of the old ultraviolence. The woman, a Deerfield resident, was home alone when two burglars attacked her via the screen door. At first, the woman thought it was a joke. But when they presented her with a brown paper bag with her dead kittens in it, shit got real. A fight ensued with her getting beaten and having the lives of her other pets threatened. She finally gave in and told them where the safe was. The thieves took the safe, called her a crazy cat lady, beat her some more, spray painted her home and her, then ran out. Fortunately, the woman survived to seek revenge at a later date. This is a time when you sort of wish you had nosy neighbors or better locks. I would want better locks. For our second to last story, the worst landlords in Florida, or not in Florida, a multi-million dollar couple hiding out in New Jersey on a substantial number of Miami slums. Denise and Abraham Bakneen have racked up more than $2.4 million in fines as slumlords. Ask the residents who live in buildings filled with roaches, mold, broken windows, mushrooms, and crumbling concrete at a price of five to six hundred dollars a month. When confronted in New Jersey about the state of their buildings and what their residents go through, they denied who they were, going as far as hiding in the neighbor's backyard and calling the police. For the record, it was them. The couple do own a Florida-based home, but nothing like the slums they operate in. They have not paid any of their fines, refuse to go to court, and generally deny who they are if asked about it. These rich bastards are so awful, the state is drafting legislation specifically to address their absolute disregard of humanity and laws. We don't blame them for denying who they are. After all, I'd hate to be as horrible a human being as they are. All else being equal, fuck you, Vaknins. Yes. Fuck you, long and hard. But congratulations on setting a new bottom standard for both New Jersey and Florida, respectively. And in our final story, campus rape has taken on a new twist and keeps getting worse by the detail. Valencia College and three instructors, Maureen Bugnacki, Linda Shaheen, and Barbara Ball, are facing charges for weekly transvaginal probes. The women raped were part of the medical diagnostic program, which did say vaginal probes would be, quote, voluntary. But with threats of having their grades lowered and being blacklisted, it was clearly voluntary policy in name only, but coerced strongly. To make things worse, the students were forced to disrobe any restroom and with just a towel on, submit to the probing in full view of the class and instructors weekly. This was, of course, uncomfortable and embarrassing. The probing involved placing a condom on the probe, lubrication, and then insertion. Sometimes the students would be sexually stimulated in order to insert. If this is not sexual assault, I don't know what is. To make things worse, in the case of one student, she was told by Barbara Ball, you're sexy and should be an escort or prostitute. Shut up, you fat bitch. To date, Valencia College has made no comment. Jeez, I can't imagine why. We would like to guess at what an appropriate comment would be to address this. But even we fall short from just how bad this is to even comment. Well, that's it for this week, everyone. This week's episode was brought to you by the Florida Core Values. Yes, Florida Core Values. Low test scores below that of Texas and a failure to invest in the youth. Before we go, I'd like to mention that this will be our last episode of the season. Mike will be leaving us and I'd personally like to thank him for all the time and effort he's put in. See you all. I finally found a way to get the hell out of Florida. So till next time, this is Nick and Mike saying, get the hell out of Florida. Please, God, please get the hell out.